Hey, what's up guys? Red Bishop here of the Press A to Listen podcast and welcome to another video review. This time around for Super Time Force from Cappy Games or Cappy Bar Games. And Super Time Force is a frantic, over-the-top game that combines traditional side-scrolling gameplay, but it has its own distinct twist on that. And we'll get into all that here in this video review. So first off, let's just talk about how this game has been in development for quite a number of years, and finally it is now available on the Xbox One and Xbox 360 for 15 bucks. And as you can tell from this gameplay, it looks like a typical side-scrolling shooter. But when you get deep into the mechanics of the game, you quickly realize, and actually with their, their very good tutorial that starts out, you quickly realize that this game has some nuance to it, it has some some things that maybe you're not used to with a side scroller and it does some innovative innovative things that really make it stand out from the traditional side scroller so it's getting right into it as you can tell from the very beginning here there are a crap ton of characters in this game and most of them are introduced throughout the story so you'll start with uh, three or four of them at the beginning and some of them are introduced by you completing certain levels some of them are introduced by you collecting a certain number of the collectibles and then but most of them are found in levels so one level in each hub world has a character hidden in them that once found will become part of your team so you can use him in any level from there on out um, but just getting getting into the actual gameplay itself if you, you you cannot play this as a traditional side scrolling shooter because the way that the mechanics work is you have 60 seconds to complete each level and that seems like, oh, a minute, that's not that long. It actually turns out to be a pretty significant chunk of time with what they introduce. They have this timeout system in the game, which what happens there is that once you die, or once you you know get annihilated in the game, you hit the B button, and it'll stop time. It'll freeze time. And from there, you can hit left trigger to rewind, right trigger to fast forward, or left bumper to just go all the way back to the beginning if you feel like you just messed up all the way. But what you can do here is, is you can rewind to a specific area in the game so if your character j happened to just die you hit that B button you hit left trigger and you rewind to a spot where maybe you can actually save that guy because once you rewind and you hit play again that character that just died will keep going it, that, that he's on the screen you don't control him or anything but he's a kind of a silhouette that will keep going his path his path will keep going until his ultimate demise now if you end up killing that enemy that that killed him before you can save that you can save that character and what happens then is you get an extra hit point in this game you get hit once boom you're done you have to rewind but if you get if you save your teammate you get two hit points and when what comes with that is you get two hit points but you also get that that teammates power move so if you start out with Jean Rambois or John Rambois you get a if you hold down the X button you get a three round automatic weapon well, if you save your teammate, so let's say you save Zakasaurus from dying, you get you also get his power move, which is a he shoots, he spits purple acid out. So you get both of those. You get the three round automatic weapon, and you get the the acid spit. So that t comes in real handy when fighting these tougher enemies that take multiple hits, and it comes in extra handy when you're going up against these boss battles. When actually getting into the rewind and the timeout mechanic, it it makes you think because there are certain doors or certain boss battles in particular, that you can't just defeat in 60 seconds with one character. You have to strategically try to think like, okay, I've got this character, John Rambois, or Jean Rambois, but he's not doing enough damage on this, on this enemy or this boss. So you need to rewind, since that specific teammate will keep running his path, you play 15, 20 seconds, let him do the damage, rewind, bring in another Jean Rambois, or bring in Jeff Leopard, who shoots... Um, missiles if you hold down his power the X button for his power move you have him do 15 or 20 seconds and both of those times that boss battle will take less time to do because he's taking more and more damage so if you keep doing that and by the end of it if you can have you know almost 10 or 15 different characters on screen all doing their own path and all taking all doing damage to the boss you can defeat a boss rather easily now granted each each time you go to a different hub world there's a different boss it has different patterns, so it's not just you can remember this one pattern and keep doing it and doing it. But the gameplay itself, although it, it looks very, very similar to past games with its you know unique with its 16-bit, 8-bit art style, it does require you to think a little bit. And I think that's one of the the main things I enjoy about it is you. There are times with 
the rewind stuff where you can just pause and you can sit there and think to yourself, well, this isn't working, so I need to try and maybe substitute a character here, and I need to maybe I should just rewind all the way to the beginning of the level and just start over because with those characters taking their own paths and doing their own thing, it gives you extra time to think. It gives you extra time to 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 scout out where you need to go and what you need to destroy here to move on and defeat this level because again, you only have 60 seconds each time. Now, with all this being said, you don't get infinite amount of timeouts to use in each in each level. You only get 30. You get 30 to use, that's it. Once you're done with 30, if you don't, if you have not defeated the mission, the mission is then a failure, and you have to try again. The way you get more timeouts in each level is you find these yellow glorbs that are hidden throughout. There are some hidden, there are some that you get from just, you know, progressing through each, each mission. What they do is each time you find one, you get an extra timeout to use in that level. So they, they become useful, and it makes collectibles where you're not just collecting useless intel for a game. You're collecting stuff that actually benefits you in the long run and benefits you in each and every mission. I mentioned that there's only 60 seconds to get through each level, but if you find these blue and orange plus 10 clocks throughout each level, it actually adds 10 seconds to the time. So if you end up getting those and then hitting LB and rewinding all the way back to the beginning of the level, you could end up with 30 40, 50 additional seconds, which in the long run obviously helps you out tremendously. And to help with the, you know, 30 timeouts and to help with the only 60 second timer you have, there are these purple shards hidden throughout each level as well. There are three in each level. Now, the, the upside to this is it slows down time, so it allows you to, to get through each level a little bit faster and not having to worry about certain enemies shooting their, their bullets at you because they'll, they'll be in slow motion. The downside to this is you have to use a timeout and rewind for them to appear. They don't just appear as soon as the level starts. You have to actually use a timeout and rewind for them to show up. But they come, they're extremely beneficial in certain boss fights because they'll show up at the top of a screen. You hit those, you're able to hit a, a, you know, a, a boss before he actually is able to shoot you. The other downside to this, though, is as soon as your one guy hits it, if you rewind and try to bring in a new character, you have to hurry up and hit that shard before your old teammate does. Because if your old teammate hits it first, it will not slow down in your new with with your new teammate. So there's some again some more strategy involved there. It, it causes you to think like, well, should I use the time? Should I use this shard and slow down time here as early as I can, or do I wait until maybe halfway in the boss fight to to do it? So it, again, it's just all strategy. It's not something that you can just run into gung ho and just go all guns a blazing and think you're going to get through this game with ease because it's just not going to happen. Mention that how the gameplay is frantic and over the top, and the story itself doesn't shy away from that either. It is both over the top and both crazy. They they use a lot of it's a lot of pun field narrative throughout. It's a lot of humor. It's a lot of you know, there's some potty humor in there, so if you're not a fan of that, there's a little bit of it, but not a ton, so don't worry about that. But they do a good job of making you laugh, even with no voiceovers and it mainly being, you know, weird noises or mainly just being all written. It it does make you laugh out loud a, a handful of times, so the writing itself is pretty good. The, some of the puns are hit and miss, but, you know, anything that uses a pun is, is going to be that way. That's kind of more subjective. So some will like that part of the story, some will not. But when you're moving throughout the story, there are six time zones throughout. There are the 1980s, 1980Xs as they put in the game, 1990X, 1 million BC, and so on. And each each new time zone comes with a different art style and different characters and different backgrounds and, and stuff. So they mix it up so you're not playing the same, you know, wasteland post-apocalypse setting throughout the whole game. It, it, it changes it up. There are dinosaurs in the game. There are futuristic cops in the game and so they, they they do a good job of changing it up a little bit just when you think you're getting bored of a specific area they throw a new one out right at you and you don't have to do them in any order you can do 1 million BC first and then do the 1990s and then do the do the 1980s or you can do the 1980s then 1990s and then a million BC and, and so on so you can do them in any order you want so they don't tie you down to one specific area until you beat it so if you get stuck in one level and feel like ah just you're banging your head against a wall, but you want to try out the new ones, you by all means you can. You can quit out and, and try those out. But just to end this video review right now, because it is getting a little bit long, Super Time Force is one of the best games on the Xbox One and Xbox 360. It does a good job of keeping you on your toes, and it does a damn good job of bringing the fun factor. The game is, is insanely fun to play. I, I never, in the 20 hours I've spent playing this game, I have never once been 
so bored where I felt like I had to move on or I had to stop. The only times I stopped was because I had to. I've been playing it for too, too long. But it, it's, it's incredibly fun to play. And you can spend 15 bucks on some stuff on the Xbox One right now that's just not even close to, to being as great as Super Time Force is. It might have taken them a long time to develop this game. But man, oh man, was it worth it. So thanks for listening to the video review and watching. Hope you enjoyed.